we have a gentleman making $11,571.84 a month. This is conservative. Okay, this gentleman is married, so he's not even including wife's income, which is about 30% of the $11,571.84, if I recall when I was talking to him. So I'm dealing with a 57-year-old individual married, making conservatively $11,571.84. We also have another stream of income. He has a paid off property, which is um, collecting rent of a little over 4,000 a month, okay? His expenses, look, 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 check this out. Some of you are not even gonna believe this. His expenses per month, okay, are $1,500 a month. So I make $11,000 on the low end, not even including wife's income, and I only spend about $1,500. This person's in a unique situation where um, they're, they're living under a different household, so he doesn't have to pay for rent. In terms of debt, the only debt obligation he has is a vehicle. So I rounded it up to $20,500, but in reality he owes $20,424 95 cents on a vehicle, 3.99 is, is the interest rate, and the monthly payment's 479.83 a month. Other than that, it's just living expenses. So, coming back to the situation, 11,571.84 a month, expenses 1,500, debt is just a car. We have one paid off property, he has other assets, savings, we're cash flowing, $8,727.75 a month. This is just beautiful, okay? We recently obtained a personal unsecured revolving line of credit for $20,000 at a 14.65% interest rate, which yes, it's a bit high. We don't love it, but we can obviously fix that down the road, so I'm not too concerned. And um, uh, this person is looking to buy a home soon so that they can move out of the current home that they are in because they don't live in their own home, they're living with family members. So they desire to get their own place, you know, him and his wife, boom, buy a home. I believe for 300,000 is the, um, you know, what we're looking for. And he simply wants to, you know, learn this velocity banking thing, uh, you know, test it out and, and see how we can you know, get some small short-term wins. So by the time we get this home for 300,000, however much we put down, we'll know how to pay that off in say, maybe a year and a half, two years. Extremely fast by simply doing velocity banking, okay? So a couple things. There's a conservative way to do velocity banking. There's an aggressive way to do velocity banking, okay? So I can either take 66% of 20,000, which is $13,000, $13,200 for the month of May, make my first chunk towards the vehicle. It's gonna save me a ton of money up front. If you're wondering, Denzel, 14.65, 3.99, whoa, whoa, whoa. Where's the, where's the interest savings there? When you look at the overall, uh, interest and the breakdown this 479.83 probably like 70 to 80 dollars per month is being stripped in interest so this 14.65 simple interest is actually going to turn out looking like about one to two dollars a day in interest costs now because I am shifting, okay, the first part of velocity banking is pretty much debt consolidation, right? Then the second part is actually leveraging my entire income to pay off a debt. So option one, I take 13,200, throw it on the car. The day I take this 132 out is the day I dump this 11,571.84 back into the line of credit. 
that same day, his expenses, ladies and gentlemen, are only $1,500. So over a 30-day period, only $1,500 is going to come out of the freaking line of credit. Okay? And I know my, um, whatchamacallit, my cash flow number is probably off, but he was being conservative. So even if he does spend more money, I mean, eight grand is a lot of money. When you look at the time that it would take, 13.2 comes out, 11,571.84 goes in, 1,500 comes out in a 30-day window. Literally, the following month, I'll make a, I can make another chunk of the difference on the vehicle. And within a 30 to 45, maybe 60 day period, the car is done and the line of credit is paid off close to zero, negligible in terms of interest costs. Okay. I'm probably going to pay about $30 in interest over a 30 to 45 day period if I do everything accordingly. Okay. And that's a great way to kind of get his feet wet with this velocity banking tested out. The aggressive way is he can simply take the whole 20K out and just pay the thing off in one shot, right? And then the payment, the 479.83, right, plus 20,000 of principal, the, the car's done, right? And then I can simply dump 11,571.84 in, take 1,500 out. By the second month, the line of credit's done. The only thing that comes out is expenses, okay? Done, 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 right? This thing is done in 30, 40, 30, 45 days. If I was doing debt snowball, this would take me about two and a half months. There's no argument. Debt snowball, velocity banking here are pretty much neck and neck. Yes, velocity banking goes about maybe a month, month and a half faster, but the real difference is the leverage. I don't lose my cash flow in the process of paying off this debt. I can immediately, when I go to buy the home, because he wants to buy this very soon, I think in the next few months, I'll have both the personal line of credit of 20K, which I've used effectively. The bank is gonna see that effective usage with the money, number one. Um, so I'll have both Leverage of 20,000 plus whatever existing cash flow I have between now and the time I accumulate this $300,000 property plus whatever savings he has, yada yada, right? So the third chunk would be towards his home. So if he's already had money on the side for that down payment, well, now he has this personal line of credit to go a little faster. And I would say that we would not stay with this personal line of credit for very long. I'm gonna see if I can drastically lower that interest rate with a credit line increase, number one. And I would probably do about maybe, maybe two to three chunks once I obtain this property. Two to three chunks using the personal line of credit. Say I'm making 15K chunks and I do three of them that's 45,000 of principal knocked down on the property, plus whatever I put down initially, plus the monthly payments during those two to three chunk period, which is gonna be under a year. That's a ton of equity. You know what I can do. You know where I'm going with this. I can eventually uh, transition, what? To a HELOC, right? So that would be a second position HELOC, say 30,000, okay, whatever it is. And I just keep going, I'll probably get a, you know, like a four to 5% rate, maybe even lower if they have like an introductory offer on a home equity line of credit in the second position, okay? Another option after I'm debt free from the car is Instead of going with a traditional mortgage, I could look at obtaining a first position HELOC or what's called an all-in-one loan, okay? And if I read 
my terms and agreements properly, I can potentially get a $300,000 simple interest debt that functions like a checking account. Therefore, it would eliminate the whole chunking, having to you know, take money out of one account, put into another, and then do all those transactions. If I have a $300,000 first position line of credit, then I can set up my 11,571.84 to simply enter that account each and every month. So literally I'll be making $11,000 payments to the mortgage each and every month. And then I'm basically living out of the mortgage, right? 1,500 bucks or in reality would actually drop or maybe not, it would go up because of the mortgage payment itself. But here's the great part. He's not going to have a mortgage payment because the dude is dumping in his paycheck. So guess what? His paycheck is his payment, right, to the mortgage. So he's not even gonna see that. It's not gonna affect him whatsoever. Plus I was cash flowing crazy amount in the beginning to begin with. Taking a look at this side here, what I wanna get into is the financial moves that he can be making in addition to velocity banking. So in addition to velocity banking, I could be establishing some other moves to accumulate wealth and pay off debt at the same exact time, okay? So when we're looking at the infinite banking concept, right, and this person has a business, like I said, he's got a property, so he's collecting income through there. This is just his W-2 income. We got wife's income we didn't even mention. We got a lot of money that we're not even putting on the table here. That extra funds, extra money, extra chunking capability can flow into a policy. Even at 57 years old, if designed properly, I can have a very effective, inexpensive policy for the simple maximization of cash value to use like a line of credit to the point where the line of credit would become obsolete. It'll just become an add-on feature, benefit. The real high right, is right here, the IBC, it becoming his own bank, creating his own tax-free system to invest in real estate, buy gold and silver, have brokerage accounts, maybe a business, have cash equity, things like that. And these are just some ideas, right? Once you get to this point, I'm pretty much in the same boat as you. I'm testing things out. I'm seeing what works, what doesn't, you know? So for, for me personally, this, this is what I'm doing. This is what has produced results so far. So it's made me happy. It's made my numbers look good. Um, and it's just stuff that makes sense. So for me, I've got a personal checking account, business checking account. This person's got the same thing, okay? I make all my money through my business, so in order to fund my IBC policy, I do distributions, right, from the company, distributions, and then in the form of a salary, and I send that money into my tax-free bank. I also write, when I go to use this policy, I will borrow out of it, right, taking out a policy loan, okay? I'm gonna take out a policy loan, which goes back to my personal checking account because this is a personal policy. Then I write myself, Denzel Rodriguez writes himself a loan to his own company. So now I'm putting the company in debt. I'm gonna charge an interest rate on my own money while my own money is growing at four to six percent tax free. Okay, so now look what's happening. Money's getting used more than once. Uh oh, stay with me. Okay, so now that the money has come back into the business account, business checking account, now I can do things like this. I don't. I open up an HSA. Maybe I get a Roth. Maybe I open up a brokerage account. I have the business already, so that's you know accumulating income. Right, that's bringing in income already. These are investments, okay? I'm transitioning from the E and the S quadrant over to the B and the I, okay? 
in the business checking account, I buy things like gold and silver, right? So I, I buy some silver, right? And I buy some gold, okay? I accumulate gold and silver, the real stuff, not the stock, although I could, you know, do that if I wanted to, right? So I figure out different forms of money that I can accumulate as a young individual. So we got cash gold, we got the real gold, okay? We got silver, different stuff, right? Interesting stuff, okay? We can take a look at this, all right? And then cash equity, it's always important to have cash, right? You never know, pandemic, things like that. Whatever goes down, it's important to have cash on you, right? So you, so you accumulate the cash, right? Is what it is, okay? In the business checking account, I buy cash equities, okay? Things that uh, uh, retain, okay? Or things that I can uh, just have as a, as a getaway. Never know, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm learning. We'll see. Okay, so I accumulate different things that will increase in value or give me leverage in times of uncertainty. Okay, so right now we're, we're in an uncertain time where we don't know how long this money is going to last. What's very interesting about this money here, if you look on the bottom right, okay, it says that this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. So, so this, this money, all this money, this, this, this paper stuff, right? It's all debt, has no value. So why have it? Well, you need it to actually buy stuff, right? So it, it still has that purpose. So you, you need it to buy stuff. But what do you buy? Do you buy more cash? No, not necessarily. Okay, I buy things like this. Stuff that will retain its value. Gold, silver, it'll be a hedge when the markets go stupid and people don't know what to do and people start listening to Buffett and Buffett doesn't even know what to do and you know, you, you just try to get as much information as possible as you can try and do the right thing but if you diversify the money okay you spread the risk whether you buy bonds treasuries notes the physical cash itself gold and silver right and then ultimately real estate which is another kingdom principle here if I'm gonna have a successful kingdom I need land I need land okay I need I need power land is power and leverage in a lot of cases I right, can build a lot of equity and can fortify my laws.